I'm married to three, so. I got married in Okay, let's try this again. Thank you, Holly, for taking my place. Appreciate it. All right, so start all over again. There was only one video series that I loved watching in class as a kid. And when I became a teacher, there was only one video series that I loved to show my students during science lessons. And your guesses were? Bill Nye. <laughs> Mrs. Grizzle. Oh my God. Magic school bus, right? Gotta love it. <laughs> now, um, it still resonates today with classrooms and students. I, I, mean, I was looking on, on YouTube for some videos of Magic School Bus. There's some uh, fresh comments online. This student a couple months ago said, when you saw that VHS player in science class, you knew you were going to have a good time, right? <laughs> and I love this one. This is only a year ago. My high school biology teacher still uses Magic School Bus. To high school biology teacher. That's awesome. <laughs> But uh, Magic School Bus had a really special way of transporting us to faraway places. And it still does today. So much so that they're actually releasing a brand new series of Magic School Bus. Can't wait for that. But I think Arnold spoke it best in the opening line when he said, please let this be a normal trip. And you know, of course, it was not going to be a normal trip, right? Um, and as amazing as the Magic School Bus is, um, I want all of us to be able to take those experiences that Magic School Bus offers a step further in your classrooms. I want to see all of you become the Miss Frizzles of today. And you can do that with an emerging technology called VR, virtual reality. Now, it, this isn't a new concept. It goes back about 70 years, the idea of VR. And, uh, but it wasn't until 2014, just three years ago, when uh, uh, some Google engineers released Google Cardboard that was born from a 20% project, and they wanted to bring VR to the masses. They wanted uh, to make it extremely cheap, easily accessible, and by doing so, they broke that barrier that held VR back for so long. And now it's in thousands of homes around the world, like this grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> if you've ever done this at home, you've probably experienced the same thing with your family. <laughs> and have you ever put your headset on a child recently? It's a magical and sometimes shocking experience. But the rise in the popularity of VR has grown so quickly over the past couple of years, so much so that there are now 10 million cardboards have been shipped worldwide. More than 100, 100 million cardboard-related apps have been downloaded uh, via um, iOS and Android app stores. Um, and uh, 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 back, I'm sorry, back last year in 2016, Samsung conducted a survey of 1,000 educators on the topic specifically of VR in the classroom, and uh, the numbers were very interesting. Um, not surprisingly, though, only 2% of those 1,000 teachers were actually using VR in their classroom. Right? It's still, it's still a, a new tool in the classroom. Uh, but 83% um, of those 1,000 teachers felt that VR might actually improve learning outcomes. Those teachers, a majority of them, see the potential that VR ha can, can have in their classroom. But they're not trying it yet. But through VR, we can fly, uh, uh, allow students to fly freely through our solar system as they learn about our planets and the sun. And uh, VR can help build empathy by giving them that first person perspective into the life of, of um, uh, I'm sorry, of uh, refugees around the world, like in this example. And um, apps like, uh, I spoke a lot about Google Street View these past two days, it's my all-time favorite, can, stay, uh, can take students almost anywhere in the world uh, that you want them to go or that they want to go. Um, but when you expose students to the effects that VR has on their learning, you get engagement like you've never seen before. They feel like they're really there, so much so that they'll point out things as if you see exactly what they're seeing, right? <laughs> And uh, 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 they'll even try to reach out and grab things because they're so immersed in the experience. They feel like they're really there. There's so much VR content out there that, that they can have a profound effect on learning. What I'm really interested in, though, is how we can get our students to participate in the creation side of this content. And that happens, uh, and, and there are a few great tools. I talked a lot about the past two days as well. And they were designed with the classroom in one, uh, mind. One is ThingLink VR. Um, it's one of the most amazing tools I found. 
and it allows students to create interactive VR experiences like this of an organic farm in Hawaii, where those tags are uh, include um, uh, yeah incorporate embedded material like pictures and videos and audio files and video recordings and things like that within this VR experience. Um, another really great one is CoSpaces, uh, which allows students to create their own three-dimensional VR scenes, like in this example of a scene from To Kill a Mockingbird, where you can actually virtually walk around that garden and into that house. It's pretty amazing. Um, so where would you like to take your students? Okay? Um, if you can imagine it, you could probably take them there now with VR. And with VR, the possibilities are almost endless. And I love this little kid. What she, uh, in her experience with VR. Is it pretty there? Yes. I wish I could touch it. Have you heard of this? I wish I could touch it, right? Because again, they feel like they're really there. So I ask you again, become the Miss Frizzles of today. And if you're interested in exploring more, check out this bit.ly slash VR and EDU. And there's a Twitter chat, AR, VR, and EDU. Thank you very much, everyone.